Why does Completion Square get a bad rep? Why do students feel like they hate Completion Square? I remember a lot of times when I'd first start teaching Completion the Square and students would say, I understand math, but the one thing I do not remember is completing the square. Completing the square is one of those processes I just don't understand. And I think one of the reasons why we kind of struggle with completing the square is students don't recognize the relationships we're looking for and why that's going to be helpful to apply to a quadratic equation. In this video, what I want to do is explore these relationships. So therefore you have a better understanding of what is completing the square and why we're looking to achieve it. All right, so let's just start off with these two examples. Now you might look at these two uh, quadratics and you say, hey, I remember these. And yes, these are what we call perfect square trinomials. And the reason why we call them perfect square trinomials is because the first term can be written as a square number and the last term can be written as a square number. Now, again, it's something I want you to understand here. Just because the first term and the last term are square numbers does not mean it's a perfect square trinomial. For it to be a perfect square trinomial, my middle term has to be two times the square root of this last number. So what I recognize here is six is going to be a two times three. Now don't worry about the negative for a second. We're gonna to get to that difference here in a little bit. Now let's go and take a look at this example. And again, we can see that this is a x squared, right? That's an x times x quantity squared. And this one's going to be a four times four quantity squared. And you notice here that the middle is going to be a two times four. Now, just recognizing this relationship is extremely important. And the reason why it's extremely important is because this is exactly what we want to achieve when we're trying to complete the square. Really completing the square is creating a perfect square trinomial. And the reason why these are so special is because when we first learn how to factor, sometimes factoring can be difficult. But when we recognize that we have a perfect square trinomial, we can factor this as a binomial square. Now, if you're not sure if you trust me on this one yet, don't worry. I remember x minus three quantity squared is x minus three times a x minus three. And again, if you just wanna check the work, you can always multiply everything back out, right? So the x times x is going to be an x squared. X times negative three is a negative three X. Negative three times X is a negative three X. And negative three times negative three is going to be a positive nine. So what I want you to see then is again, we're getting this X squared, we're getting the nine, and you can see how there's two threes with the negative three X minus the three X. Now again, all the really negative is going to be telling us is what's gonna be the sign in your binomial. In this example, we're gonna get the exact same thing. And if you wanted to expand it out and check my work, you can definitely go and do it. But hopefully you recognize here that when we have a perfect square trinomial, we can easily factor these down to a binomial square. Squared. And I want you to recognize again, this relationship of my first, my middle and my last term, because we're going to use this relationship to solve some problems in this video. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, this first example to kind of see how can we identify what if we needed to find our value C as well as our value A, what exactly, how is this relationship with perfect square trinomials going to help us identify these missing values? Let's just assume this can be written as a perfect square trinomial. So therefore it can be factored down to a binomial squared. Now, remember the first term, right? We already have as an X squared. So that is going to be good. We already have that settled. Now my middle term, if this is a perfect square trinomial is going to be two times something. So really, if I want to say two times, what is going to give me 10? And we know that answer is just going to be a five, right? Now, again, an easy way to, I always identify that value is just to take your middle term and divide it by two. That's always going to give you that value. Now to be able to find C, remember what we're going to do is we're going to take this five and we're going to square it, which is going to give me a 25. So therefore this can be simplified into an X squared plus a 10 X plus 25, which is now going to be my perfect square trinomial. Now what I want to do is say, what is the factor form of this? So you actually don't need to know how to factor this. Now, hopefully you already do recognize this, which is just going to be an X plus five quantity squared. But the thing I want you to recognize here is remember my C is green squared here, right? So really what I can simply do is just take my five and square it. And that's how I got to the 25, which eventually is my value of C. If you remember my last video where I introduced completing the square, we talked about C being equal to an H squared. Well, in this example, that's kind of similar what's going on here, but we're not using H. What C equals in this case is now a B divided by two, right? That's what I did. I did 10 divided by two to give me five, right? And then I just square it. So B divided by two squared is going to give you a C. And then what I want you to recognize here is what is the relationship between C and A? And basically if you take C, which is 25, if I just take the square root of that number, I'm just going to get a five, which is exactly in my value. Or another way you could go ahead and take a look at this is A is just simply equal to a B divided by two. So before you square it, just take B divided by two. That is how you can identify your A. So let's go ahead and follow these two rules to be able to see if we can solve some more problems that might be a little bit more difficult. Okay, so in this example, um, again, kind of going through the same thing. If I just want to kind of follow um, these rules here, I want to find C, I can just simply say, well, that's going to be a B divided by two quantity squared, right? So in this case, it's going to be a 14 divided by two, which is and then quantity squared. 
So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is going to be a 49. Now let's go and figure out what my a is. So again, remember, a is going to equal a b divided by 2, right? Just not with the square. So when I go ahead and do this, I take a 14 divided by 2, which is just going to be a 7. Now again, it's very important though that you need to match the sign of your binomial with the sign of your trinomial. Now, and again, in this case, it's already done for us, but it's just important to recognize that fact. So therefore, if I want to write it with my correct values, I can have an equation of x squared plus 14x plus 49 is equal to an x plus 7 quantity squared. All right, now usually when students start to get a little confused is when we start introducing fractions, but that's completely okay. Just follow the rules that we have here. Again, we're trying to find a value C that creates a perfect square trinomial. We can't really write three as two times some number, at least with integers. So it's okay, we're gonna have fractions. So just remember that C is equal to B divided by two quantity squared. Because again, this relationship does not go away. This number is created by two times the number if it's a perfect square trinomial. And then this is going to be that number squared. So going back to here, all I'm simply going to do is take a three divided by two and square it. Using the quotient of product rule, I'm going to square the three and the two. That's going to give me a nine over four. Now, again, hopefully you kind of recognize here with my a, that's just going to be a b over two, which is just going to be a three halves. So therefore I can rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial and a binomial squared with these fractions. And again, even though this looks a little confusing, it is important to recognize like, what if, let's just actually expand this out just to make sure, because a lot of times students will like, once we get fractions, they just kind of forget everything that we possibly learned. So I actually just want to multiply this out with you real quick. Um, just so you can see exactly how this works, or at least a way that you can do like a mental check for this. So we know when we multiply x times x, that gives us an x squared, right? So therefore, we're going to have a 3 halves x, that's going to be with those two, and then we can do these two, 3 halves x plus a 3 halves x, and then 3 halves times 3 halves, remember when you're multiplying fractions, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So that is going to equal a 9 fourths. Now, I'm adding these fractions. Well, they have the same numerator and they have the same denominator, right? So I can combine them because they have the same denominator. Don't really care about the numerator. But again, what is going to be that? That's going to be 3 plus 3 is 6 over 2. Well, 6 over 2 goes down to a 3x. So I simplify this to an x squared plus a 3x plus a 9 over 4. If you are a little bit confused and your teacher gives you like fractions like this, just remember that you can always check your work by multiplying it back out. Just to step it up one more time, an example like this, what if we actually start with a middle term that is a fraction? Again, just follow the rules. Be confident in your skills with dealing with fractions and you can do this. Remember, just C is B divided by 2 quantity squared. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this one at a time. B divided by two quantity squared. Now, again, in this case, B, we're not gonna worry about the sign. B is gonna equal a positive one half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a one half divided by two quantity squared. Now, again, how do you divide by two? Well, again, that's what we need to figure out for A, right? Remember, A equals a one half divided by two. So let's actually do A first. So remember, divided by two is really the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal or multiplying by the reciprocal. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna multiply by one half. The reason why I wanna do that is that's gonna get the denominator equal to one, which again, divided by one is just gonna be whatever is the numerator. So two times one half is just equal to a one. And therefore, in this case, I have a one fourth divided by a one, right? Which is just equal to a one fourth. So when I take one half divided by two, that's simply the same thing as a one fourth quantity squared, which is equal to a one over 16. Now, again, we don't need to worry about the signs because they're already here, right? And again, just notice the binomial and the trinomial have to have the same sign. So now when I just go ahead and plug them in to make sure this works, I get an x squared minus one half x plus one over 16 plus an x minus one fourth squared. You could definitely go ahead and check my work by expanding that out to see like we did in the last example, but hopefully now you have a little bit more confidence in identifying the value of C as well as identifying the value of A. Now, one last type of example that I really want to kind of work on in this example to really make sure that you hone in your understanding of completing the square and the relationships between your first, middle, and last term is what about if we needed to find our middle term? And I'm sorry, I know my sixes look like Bs. I never knew I was actually doing it wrong until like one time in class, a student called me out and they're like, hey, what are you, why are you writing those like that? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I always write my sixes like that. And they said, I guess I'm supposed to do it like this. I don't know. I've always just wrote them like this. And I, sometimes a B looks like a six or when I do a B, I do a B like that. So I don't know. Sometimes they always look the same, but sometimes people call me out for whatever reason. So anyways, let's go back to it. How do I figure out what B is? So in this last example, we figured out C, right? C was B divided by two quantity squared. So what that that means is this value is B divided by two quantity squared, right? I'm trying to figure out B. So let's just kind of unpack this again. So I have four is equal to a B divided by two quantity squared right? So simply to solve this, I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. Now, again, introducing the square root, it's going to be a plus or minus two. 
and that's going to equal a b divided by 2. Now, all I simply need to do is to find my b is I'm just going to multiply by a 2 on both sides. Now, what we need to do is understand, is this plus or minus 4 going to equal to b? Like, which one is it? And when I go back over and look in this example, it doesn't really matter if you're going to use plus or minus b. Like, both of those would work in this example. Since this is already x squared minus a b x plus 4, we're just going to use the positive version of the solution. So, therefore, we can just say that b is going to equal 4, and therefore, we can rewrite this as an x squared minus a 4x plus 4 which hopefully you recognize is a perfect square trinomial, right? Which can also be simplified to an x minus 2 quantity squared. See how things are kind of moving? All right, let's go and do another example. It gets a little bit more tricky. So in this example, you can see my b is going to be a 16 over 9. So again, just remember our relationship. C is going to equal a b divided by 2 quantity squared, right? So my c in this case is a 16 over 9 is equal to a b divided by 2 quantity squared. And that's what we want to be able to find is going to be our B. So first thing I'll do is I'll take the square root of both sides. And again, square root of the numerator as well as the square root of the denominator is going to be a four thirds. Now, again, you could use your plus or minus, but it doesn't really matter. We already recognize here. We just trying to find our value of B, which again, it could be positive or negative, but in this example, it's positive. So therefore I'm just going to leave it as that. So that is going to equal a B divided by two. Now, again, we need to solve for a B, right? So I'm going to multiply a two on both sides. And therefore I get a B is going to be equal to a eight thirds. So what that means here is X squared plus an eight thirds X plus a 16 over nine, right? So that's gonna be my value of B. And again, hopefully you recognize we can go ahead and factor this because again, what is our A, right? A is just going to be our B divided by two, which we already actually figured out guys. Our B divided by two is right here, which is four thirds. So I could factor that this down into an X plus a four thirds quantity squared. And again, just check this work, check to make this work. Does four thirds times four thirds give you 16 ninths? Yes, it does. Does four thirds plus four thirds give you eight thirds? Yes, it does. All right, if we wanna have a little fun on this last example, we can go ahead and work on this one. Now, the reason why this one's gonna be a little fun is because 96 is not a square number. Now, why is that important? Well, remember, C equals B divided by two quantity squared. So what's the first thing we do? We take the square root of both sides. So how can I take the square root of a 96? Remember, what you wanna do is basically break this up into a product with square numbers. So the largest square number that I recognize that divides into uh, 96 is going to be a 16 times 6. So therefore, I can break this up now into the square root of 16 times the square root of 6. The square root of 16 is going to be a 4. So, all right, let's just go ahead and write this out. So I have a 96 is equal to a b divided by 2 quantity squared, right? So I take the square root of both sides. Now, the square root of 96, we just figured that out. So that's going to be a 4 radical 6 is equal to a b divided by 2. Now again, multiply by 2 on both sides, and therefore I get an 8 radical 6 is equal to a b. Kind of looks a little confusing, but again, that is going to be the answer we're looking for. So I have an x squared plus a 8 square root of 6 x plus a 96. Now again, let's just factor in like what is my a now? So if I want to be able to figure this out, I have a x, let's see, that's going to be a plus, right? So plus a quantity squared. So what would that simplify down to? So again, what we needed to be able to do to find our A is that's just going to be my B divided by 2. And again, we already figured out my B divided by 2, which is a 4 square root of 6, right? Or you just take 8 square root of 6, right? Just remember A is equal to my B divided by 2, which in this case is 8 square root of 6 divided by 2. So therefore, is equal to an X plus a 4 square root of 6 quantity squared. Now again, let's just double check to make sure this is going to work out. So 4 square root of 6 times a 4 square root of 6 is going to give us a 16 square root of 6, which is a 9 which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, hopefully in this video, I hope you develop a better understanding of our perfect square trinomials, our binomial squared, and the process of being able to identify those values, because that is the essence of completing the square. Now, we didn't actually get into problems of solving using completing the square, but that's what I want to do in the next video of actually work through how to find the solutions of solving using completing the square. So go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here, and I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers.